Good afternoon, friends. You are welcome to our tutorials today. Today, we'll be discussing on anatomy and on the aspect known as the spinal cord. We are discussing the spinal cord under neuroanatomy. To begin, I will please encourage you to subscribe. Subscription is free. So let's start with introduction to the spinal cord. In the body, we have what we refer to as the nervous system. The nervous system can be divided into two, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is also divided into two, the brain and the spinal cord. Today, we'll be discussing on the aspect of the central nervous system known as the spinal cord. The spinal cord is a part of the central nervous system that is continuous with the brain at a foramen known as the foramen magnum. So the brain is continuous at the spinal cord at a foramen called what? Foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is the largest foramen in the cranium. The largest foramen in the cranium is the foramen magnum. And through that foramen, the brain continues as the spinal cord. Next, let's talk about the shape of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is cylindrical in shape. It is cylindrical in shape. Next, the length of the spinal cord. The length of the spinal cord varies. For an adult and for a male, the length of the spinal cord is 45 centimeters. And for an adult and a female, the length of the spinal cord is 43 centimeters. So the length of the spinal cord for male, 45 centimeters. The length of the spinal cord for an adult female, 43 centimeters. Don't forget the length of the spinal cord. Next, we go to the coverings of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is very delicate, and as such, it needs important coverings that offer us protections and other important functions. The spinal cord is covered by what we refer to as the meninges. The meninges is made up of three layers. From external to internal, the meninges has the three layers. You can remember by the mnemonic DAB. D A P from external to what? Internal. D here stands for dura mater or the dura layer. A here stands for arachnoid matter or arachnoid layer. Then P here stands for pia matter or pia layer. These are the three layers of the meninges that covers or protects the spinal cord. A very important point to note, apart from the dura matter, arachnoid matter, and pia matter that has the meninges that help to protect the spinal cord, we also have the vertebral bones. Remember, the vertebral bones are 33 in numbers. These bones also help to protect the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is within these bones known as the vertebral bones. After talking about the coverings of the spinal cord, we now move to what we refer to as the enlargements of the spinal cord. You can see from the diagram, there are some enlargements of the spinal cord. The enlargement of spinal cord is found in the cervical region and in the lumbar region. The enlargement of spinal cord found in the cervical region is called cervical enlargement. The enlargement of spinal cord found in the lumbar region is called the lumbar enlargement. The cervical enlargement is important for the formation of brachial plexus. Remember, nerves arise from the spinal cord, which supply various aspects of the body. The nerves arising from the cervical enlargement forms the brachial plexus, which supplies the muscles of the upper limb. The nerves arising from the lumbar enlargement forms the lumbar plexus, which supplies the muscles of the lower limb. 
So these enlargements are essential for what now? Bringing about important supply to the models of the upper limb and the models of the upper limb. Take note of these points. It is very important to remember. The mass of grey matter in the cervical region and in the lumbar region is more than the mass of grey matter in other aspects of the spinal cord. Why is that so? The amount of grey matter in a particular region determines the amount of muscle that that region supplies. The cervical enlargement has large amount of grey matter because it supplies majority of the muscles of the upper limb. The lumbar enlargement has large amount of grey matter because it supplies the muscles of the lower limb. So since the muscles these regions supplies, the nerve arising from these regions supplies, that is why they have that large amount of grey matter. So the point is, the amount of grey matter in a region of spinal cord determines the number or the amount of muscles in which it supplies. The cervical and lumbar enlargement give rise to nerves that supply so many muscles because they have large amount of grey matter compared to other aspects of the spinal cord. After talking about the enlargement of the spinal cord, let's talk about the termination of spinal cord. As the spinal cord is about to terminate, it forms an enlargement here. We refer to this enlargement as the conus medullaris. The conus medullaris. C-O-N-U-S. And medullaris. So the conus medullaris is the dilated part of the spinal cord where it ends inferiorly. After the conus medullaris is formed, take note of this point, there tends to be a modification of pia matter which extends from the spinal cord. So from the conus medullaris downward, there is a modification of pia matter which extends downward to insert at the vertebral bones, specifically at the coccyx. You refer to this structure as the phylum terminale. F-I-L-U-M-C-E-R-M-I-N-A-L-E So what is the phylum terminale? The phylum terminale simply is a modification of pia mater that extends from the conus medullaris towards the lower vertebra bones. After talking about the termination of spinal cord, let's now talk about the transverse section of spinal cord. If you should cause the spinal cord transversely, what are you going to see? You are going to see a structure like this. So this is a transverse section of the spinal cord. Showing a transverse section of spinal cord, you are going to see that the spinal cord has two layers, just like the brain. It has what we refer to as the gray matter. The gray matter. And it has what we refer to as the white matter. But a very important point you have to take note of. The gray matter of the spinal cord is inside and the white matter is outside. But for the brain, the white matter is inside and the gray matter is outside. So it's opposite for the brain and the spinal cord. Now this is the gray matter of the spinal cord and this is the white matter of the spinal cord. When you look at the gray matter of the spinal cord, it has a butterfly shape. It has a butterfly shape or it has the shape of H. It has a H shape or a butterfly shape. At the center of the gray matter, you are going to see what we refer to as the central canal or the spinal canal. So what do we call this structure here? The central canal or the spinal canal. Anterior to the central canal, this aspect of this gray matter is referred to as the gray commissure. So what is the gray commissure? The gray commissure simply is the aspect of the gray matter that is immediately anterior or posterior to the central canal. The gray matter that is immediately anterior is called the anterior gray commissure. 
and the gray matter that is immediately posterior is called the posterior gray commission. So this is called anterior gray commission, posterior gray commission. The aspect of the gray matter immediately anterior to the central canal or the spinal canal, anterior gray commission. The aspect of the gray matter immediately posterior to the central canal, posterior gray commission. Next point to take note of. You can see this aspect of the gray matter that projects laterally. We refer to this aspect as the gray horn. So we refer to these anterior ones as the anterior gray horn and the posterior ones as what? Posterior gray horn. So remember, anterior gray horn, posterior gray horn. Anterior gray commissure, posterior gray commissure. And this is referred to as the what? As the central canal or the spinal canal. How do you understand how this gray matter is all about? Let's not talk a little.